crowd right now. Introduce yourself. I'll put on the headphones for you. Okay, okay. Oh, all right, I appreciate it. Appreciate Introduce it. yourself. I'll put the headphones on. Okay, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, they say it's when you speak, most definitely. So, um, you know, good evening, everybody. My name is T.K. Okapone. Uh, I'm from south, the south side of T-Town, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I live a polygamous, well, a poly lifestyle. I don't subscribe to polygamous because I know the word polygamous means you're married with wives. So, you know, we're not, uh, you say what? I say you're So... I'm not married. I'm not legally buying, you know, I haven't had marriage papers or anything like that. Um, but I do have multiple women. Uh, she's been with me 13 years. Her name is Armani. And, um, you know, we're just building. I'm somebody that's in the music industry. Uh, I'm an activist. If y'all ever have time to ever look me up, you know, I, I do a lot of things to help, you know, the communities and uh, things of that nature. And, um, you know, we just, uh, she got a brand. She does things with, you know, a lot of things from, from music to, uh, makeup. She, she's starting her own brand with those, uh, in, in that type of area. Uh, she's doing things with marketing and branding with her IG. Uh, and we're just some young trailblazers that's just trying to grow and continue to keep things going and just live beautiful. They say you're beautiful. Oh, thank you. You know, but yeah. <laughs> thank you, Kate. But yes, indeed, my name is Tim Dale Capone. We're both from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, also, what's going on? Uh, the other women are not available. They're not around because she had got sick, so we thought she had coronavirus. We wasn't sure, because still to this day, she cannot taste or smell. So right now we're quarantining, so no one else can, you know, come around or anything of that nature. They can't come around for at least, well, at least about 14 days. So right now, I think we're on day seven or day six. What's going on? Do y'all still hear the echo? I think they don't. No, we good. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Can you do me a favor, beloved? I'll turn off the air conditioner so again. I, I think it might be that one that sounded loud. But man, what's going on with you, man? I'm good, bro. Can you hear me? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. No problem. No problem. Uh, so the first question: What motivated you to begin this lifestyle? Okay. So, um, like I like I always tell people, we're telling my story. I'm, First of all, I'm transparent. So just for your audience to know me, I'm somebody that's very uh, down to earth and I keep things 100, as we say, you know, where I come from. I keep things straight authentic. So I'm never going to be politically correct. So, you know, uh, they say it's still an echo. Bro, as long as we can hear you. As long as you can hear me? Okay. We can hear you. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so check this out. Um, I was in a fast lifestyle. I was living a fast lifestyle of... Uh, I started living a fast lifestyle the year 2000, the end of 2011, really the beginning of 2012, and um, it, it involved multiple women. And so when I was in that street life, um, I noticed, even though I was using certain things for, uh, you know, a negative, I say on a negative trajectory of my life at that point in time, I was, you know, manipulative, deceptive to people. I, uh, I was all about selfish gain. I was doing things okay. that was only to, um, to build on myself. But I noticed the, the, posit the positive things that I had about myself, but I wasn't using them for good. So one of those positive things was I've always had leadership. Even before I got in the game of the fast lifestyle, I got a music, I got a music group called Swiss Gear Gang, and I've had multiple men up under me. So I've always had leadership quality. So now when I went to prison, I was facing life for a crime I didn't commit. I went to prison. I came home. Well, actually, I went to jail facing life, I came home on probation. Then I ended up violating probation because I took her to Hawaii without permission. And when I, when they see me on social media, go to Maui, Hawaii without permission, they sent me to prison for two years. And now I'm just now coming home. So now I reconstructed my life. You know, everything happens for a reason. Um, me and the creator, me and God, uh, we got very, very, very close. And I, I, and I understood the reason why he gave me my power, but he, I, understood, I also understood the way he wanted me to lead people. He didn't just give me my power so I can be for selfish ambition, but so I can reach one, teach one, build people. And uh, that's always that's always been my, um, let me see, that's always been part of my purpose. But anybody that's involved in the street life that knows about the street life, um, you, I don't see or hear nothing. Hopefully everybody can still, you know, hopefully others can see. Please let us know if you if, if y'all can't see or hear, hear anything. But good, um, bro. I'm good. Okay, cool. So. With me growing up in the church as a Christian, my, my family, my mother, she she loved God. Uh, you know, raising us. I've always knew my calling and my purpose on life. You know, whether I was doing music, doing this, doing that, 
I always knew that God was putting me in a position of, of, of how power to reach people, not to be glorified, but when I got into street life, so I can fund my music because I, I didn't come from the I come from like poverty, just like a lot of you know black males in the urban community. Uh, I didn't have certain type of opportunities or anything of that nature, uh, but I never subscribed to the nigga mentality. You know, a lot of us that come from poverty neighborhoods, we always, you know, man, the, the white men trying to keep us down. Oh, I don't got it. I got to do certain type of things. I was very conscious of what I was doing. I was very conscious that I was getting a fast lifestyle, but I, I, I had. To me, I had a reason why I was doing it, and I consciously chose that. But in the midst of constantly choosing that, I let the streets deceive me, and then I went off, and I strayed off. So then when I went to prison, this this my first time, my last time, hopefully, I went to prison. I came home. I did a lot of thinking. I wrote down everything. Um, I started saying my affirmations. I stopped being so religious and became more spiritual um, in my life. And I, I said, you know what? This time... I'm not going to be in a fast lifestyle anymore, but I can still read people. I feel like I'm on my natural habitat. I love um, building up. I, because even in the process of me doing manipulative things, I was building up a lot of people too. You know, it was, it's always like certain pros and cons, you know, and me just being honest with myself, I had a lot of things that I didn't like about myself that I wanted to correct, you know, because I feel like every person should always want to perfect themselves. And me, I'm my worst critic. Right. right. So uh, at the time of my life, but I always seen positive things too. It was so many people to this day that come back to me that was in the fast lifestyle with me and like, man, you changed my life. You got me off of drugs. I was doing coke and you told me, hey, you can't have no women being no drug heads around you. So I still had positive aspects about me, you know, and I think that had to come with my upbringing. But at the same time, what was the intent behind it? I always say, you know, if you're in this lifestyle, whether you're in a polygamous lifestyle, a monogamous uh, a lifestyle, what is your intent with being in this relationship? You know, are you trying to build up your queen? Are you trying to build up? Are you trying to, uh, is it, are you just a womanizer? Are you, it's so many different reasons and ulterior motives why people choose to take certain routes. So now my intent, I feel like it's pure. No, am I perfect? No, I'm not saying that at all, but I do know that um my intent is pure my intentions are right now but that's what how i got started in the lifestyle because i was in the fast lifestyle first you got you, got you. now some people would say i know you're religious and everyone can tell that you're religious some people would say okay you saying that god gave you superpowers but if god gave you superpowers the life that you live in god have to find a part of that life what would you say? Yeah, uh, what was the last part? You said God does what upon that life? I say God has to frown upon your life, the lifestyle that you live in. What would you say to those people that's looking at you with judgment eyes? Okay, so that's a beautiful question. I appreciate you for asking that. Um, well, let me kind of uh, go back to the first thing you said. God didn't give me superpowers or anything like that of that nature, but I understand my purpose. I understand my value here on earth. I understand what my calling is in life. And a lot of us just don't understand our purpose because nobody's better than the next person. So with me, I just, I understood it even as a kid. I mean, I didn't, I didn't understand it fully. I didn't have the wisdom. I didn't have the knowledge. But now today, um, I feel like me personally, like I can't speak for nobody else. And I got to an answer to God. Like I always say, like, if you feel like I'm doing something wrong, um, don't step, this is where the religious people get, you know, involved. Don't, don't, shoot me down don't condemn pray for me if, if you feel like i'm living a life that's not right for me okay all right yeah let me go ahead and just pray for this brother you know what i'm saying because i feel like he's going astray lord that's nothing nothing is wrong with that and that's the real true meaning of following god because god is love god is without judgment and label so with me on the <laughs> most definitely with me on the other hand um when people get you know judgment I, I feel like personally that i'm more living my truth now than even when i was in the church on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays on Friday night, leading the youth choir, going on Saturdays. I mean, I, I was deep in the church, but I felt like I was living by doctrines. And a lot of us in the church, we live by doctrines. We don't live by our, like, like, don't get me wrong, we get caught up in emotionalism and this hallelujah, praise God, but are we really getting that personal, personal understanding of God, that personal relationship with God? Or, or is it where we go to church and we're feeling good at church? And, and you, you know what's going on. I'm not trying to preach with that. Yeah, just to answer your question, I, I just feel like ever since the ancient days, even when I read my Bible and open up my Bible, um, it was it was men of God, great men of God, who had multiple wives, midwives, concubines, you know, um, 
that's for the people who want to get on the religious tip. So if you do believe in God, that means you believe in God's word, you know. But I think now today and uh, in the last 40, 50 years, people have taken, taken the real part out of context to making it like oh, when, when you come one, you become one. So they, they, they hear that become one. That's the like, oh, it only can be one, and, you know, one and one. They're not looking at it in the big context because man was I a mean, woman was made for man, you know, and just like in the Bible, you know, from the beginning, all the way to right now, you know, it's, it's, it's great men of God who has multiple wives. This is not really big. We, we became Americanized. That's what I like to say. But sometimes it is one man, one woman for other people. That's what, what I was about to say. <laughs> to say. So what she said was, um, some, and sometimes you know, because I'm not here to press my lifestyle and how I live on the next person. I'm just another man that's living my truth. You know, so I want you to live your truth. If you feel like the monogamous um, monogamous route is the way to go, then go that route. You know, go that route, and it's a beautiful thing. But if you, if you feel like you're living a lifestyle that um, you want to live a different lifestyle when it comes to having a multiple in poly, but you're not living it because of what people will say about you, then you're not living your truth. You got to be true to you. So that's that's that. That's my point on it. Yeah. <laughs> I true, I truly, hey, I have to agree with this, bro. His lifestyle is his lifestyle. It's not for everyone. We don't judge his lifestyle. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, you mentioned something. So I have to ask you. Some would say your lifestyle goes against the American value. How would you address that? Okay, well, it depends on what we define the American values. Uh, Yes. So, so in order for me to answer that question correctly, I got to know, because that can be subjective. So I got to understand what do people say is the American values of life. One woman, family, kid. Um, well, kind of like going to the previous question, um, I feel like I'm in my natural habitat. Like I feel like I'm living exactly the way that where God got me today. Now, will things change tomorrow? Or down the line, I don't know. I just know how I'm living today. And I do want kids eventually. Right now at this time, we're focusing on our career. We don't have any children. And uh, if, if a woman comes and she joins my empire and wants to be a part of our family and she has kids, I take that gracefully. You know, my son got taken out of my life um, uh, some, some years back. So uh, I've had, had, had a child before, you know, before I met Armani. So, um, you know, I'm all with the children and, and everything like that. But as far as just having one woman, I feel like at this time of my life, this is, I'm, I'm living where I'm supposed to be. Got you. Got you. Now, here comes the question for some women. And you know how this is going to go. <laughs> I love So, it. is sex different with all four wives? Oh, it's the same. Is sex different? Oh, I would think that, um, yeah, in certain aspects, some certain because every individual, I do with everybody on an individual basis. So some people might not like. Uh, since we're gonna keep it funky for all the beautiful women out there, we're gonna keep it straight up. This can't be rated PG. A woman might not like, not like, might not like really giving head that much. The other one might, may love it. You know what I'm saying? She may be a pro at it. Then we may have someone that may like this type of uh, sex. You know, and, you know, uh, we may not be being too graphic. You know what I'm saying? But uh, everybody's <laughs> different. Everybody has their strengths. And I just appreciate it. <laughs> Give me something to drink. Bet, bet, bet. <laughs> no problem. No, hey, hey, you answered it. You answered it. That's the whole thing about it. Right, right. I wasn't trying to get too deep because I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what type of uh, ge uh, geographic, demographic um, audience we're dealing with. So I, I want to be, you know, right, as good and respectful as, as you know, with my words. <laughs> right. For the viewers out there, we know it's a tad little bit echo. But bear with us. The brothers speak the truth. And it seems like everyone understanding. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. So, do you see yourself marrying other women? Um, well, me and Armani ha hasn't gotten married yet because, once again, if we was to get married, we would be feeling like we're doing it in the based on how society society says you got to have a piece of paper that binds you together. She's been with me thirteen years. She's never had another man in her life. 
but me. So when other people come around, like right, we're right. already married, you know, we're, this is already a marriage. And the only thing that makes it different from the traditional marriage is we don't have a certificate piece of paper. When even back in the day, they didn't have like if we kids continue to go to the to the root and the origin, it, it wasn't no certificate papers. Sometimes sure. you the room, you know, you'd be married. So, you know, um, but yeah. So we, we, as far as having the marriage, you know, the marriage license and all that, uh, we haven't. I mean, if they want to, if that would make them feel better, and I'm all for it. You know, because anything to make my queens feel better, to make sense to them, then I'm, I'm all for it. But for right now, all the women that's currently in my life, like, everybody like, nah, we don't need no papers to, to bind us. We know what it is. Respect, respect. Now, how do you handle conflict within your, within your women? When it comes to your women, how do you handle conflict? We know women have emotions. And sometimes mm -hmm. them emotions play out of control. Yes. How do you have a conflict? Um, and that's why I think it's very important to have a man. You know, and when I mean a man, I always say a man is versus a male. A male and a man is very different. Let me break that down. A man is based on characters, moral, uh, integrity. Uh, he's not going to get caught up in too much emotionalism. He's going to be able to be solid. You know, he's going to be able to lead his family. But if you have just a male, somebody that's over 21, that doesn't make you a man because you can be you can be just as emotional as the female. And it can be so much toxic. Now y'all arguing back and forth and the eagles are involved and stuff like that. And you can't really lead your, 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 your household properly. So with me being a man, um, I feel like I, I, first of all, I educate them on the ego. You know, they got to understand why they feel offended. You only can offend, offend the ego. You can't offend your true self. So once you know your true self, this is when you become more confident within yourself. When you understand the mind, the way the mind works, the way the, you know, the conscious works and everything like that, then you understand certain things. So the women that's evolved in my life, you know, um, they're not full of pride and egos. But yes, they, they are women. So you know, that time in the month might come and somebody just may want to be left alone. And this is normal, you know, whether you're in a monogamous relationship or a poly relationship. So, you know, I just, I, yes, indeed. I just, I just give them their time. You know, sometimes I give them the time or if it's something that I can really tell if somebody really has something on their mind and it's bothering them, I might take them to the side because I, I don't want to, let's say I might have a problem with, with uh, Armani. I don't want, that's not for everybody, to, you know, business to chime in and things like this. It's like I might have a problem with somebody else. Or, um, but if it's something like group, then we, we'll talk about it in a, in a group setting, you know, and we'll get to the bottom of that nature. All right. Next question. Are you the only provider or do the wives have jobs and career? Do you plan on having children? But let's stick with the, what, let's stick with the provider first. Okay. Are you the only provider do the other wives have jobs and career? Everyone. All right. So. When I say this, this is not no fairy tale. This is not like how we look at the great God, Egypt's prince of, you know, Africa, rich people. We're not that. We're, we're, we're in America. We all come from, um, well, I can't say we all come from, but me and Armani most definitely come from poverty. So, yes, we all built together as a whole. We're a true team. So everybody brings to the table. And uh, sometimes people get things misconstrued because Armani's a dancer. Once again, she's, she's staying true to herself, right? So when they see that, they say, okay, well, Armani's a dancer, so he must be on some pimp stuff. He got to be on some pimp stuff, but just just like if she was working at IHOP and she was to come and bring what she's make and put to, put together in the pot of, for the whole family, it wouldn't make me her pimp. It would make us be, uh, be, be uh, building together. I don't know why my, my, my tongue is getting uh, caught up. Yeah. But... Um, but yeah, we all provide. Everybody has has to bring to the table, you know. Until I'm put in a position, because I am in the music industry, but I'm not. I mean, I'm not on Drake's level yet. You know, I, I am an actor, but I'm not on Denzel Washington level yet. You know, I, I do do certain things. I'm just in the process of it. So until I'm able to be in a position to where I, I can solely just provide by, my, by myself, right now, this is the beginning. This is the birth of of, of our family. Yes, me and Armani been knowing each other, but as far as me just coming home to pr from prison. I'm building with new people. This is this is all a brand new relationship. So yes, of course, everybody brings to the table. Most definitely. Yeah, at the same time, like the people, like the women that are here. Well, I know for me that I I have my own brand that I'm starting. So you know, everyone is gonna have their own things going for themselves. So they're not they're not gonna just sit around and just wait for him to bring money in. Right. So they. Gotcha. 
provide for us. Right. Right. So that, that's a beautiful thing. You know, thank you, Queen. That's a, that's a beautiful thing because everyone around me, I put like I always ask them, "What's your dreams? What's your aspirations? What are you aiming for?" And I always say, "Be careful before you tell me what your dreams. I'm gonna push you to it." I'm going to make sure you get up every day. I'm going to make sure you're striving. What have you did every day? Have you went to go get the knowledge about it? Are you sitting up? Are you one step closer today? Are you, are, are you, did you do something better towards your goals than you did yesterday? So everybody with me, you have to be driven. We have to be like-minded. You know, I don't just get girls because I'm attracted to them. If that's the case, I have like 30, 30 wives right now. Some, you know, because I have to be like-minded, uh, beautiful spirited, um, God-fearing, uh, motivated, ambitious type of people because that's what's what we're on. That's the frequency and vibration that we on. So to be in harmony, I have to. That's that's the way we keep going today, you know. Because I'm I'm a pusher. But, but yes, indeed. So this question is for money. Come on, close. How do you how do you feel being a part of the family? I'm part of the soul part of the family. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here for the longest. <laughs> So, I mean, I love being around beautiful women. I love, like, having people that I consider myself to be as a sister to me. So, you know, I have one sister, one mom, and they don't live out here with me. And I like to be around women that can, like, really understand me. That, like, we go through the same thing at the same time, like, each and every day. Like, we're going to work. We're building ourselves up, building each other up for our own dreams. So, I love it. So, if another woman wanted to to be a part of the family, what is the actual uh, process that y'all go through? Um, basically, how did you want to answer that? Sorry. No, I was just gonna say there's not really a process for me. Like he will go and talk to the woman. I let him go in more into detail, but I trust his judgment with everything and with anyone that he brings in. So. Yes, indeed. And uh, you know, she she's been knowing me for a while, so she. You know, the key word what she said is she trusts my judgment. When she knows the character of a man, like she knows that me. She knows that I'm not just going out there getting some thought or somebody that's just you know, like she knows what I, I look for in a woman and she trusts that and uh, the process is really I mean, let's just keep it real. This is we're in a day of internet now, so usually how it how it comes off is, you know, on the internet somebody may have seen me, seen my lifestyle. I might even approach somebody and say, you know, how do you feel about you know, uh, a poly relationship. You know, are you open? Are you interested? This is me. And I'll, oh, yes. Another thing for the fellas that may just now be looking at this. Uh, one thing about me is, I always say, you know, when you live in your truth, a man is, is, is a man is always based off integrity. Always come to the table open and and saying your truth. Don't come to the table. You know, give give a woman a chance to choose if she want to be with you or not. Don't try to hide anything because there's gonna be women that's against it. And it's gonna be women that's for it. So when I meet a woman, I always let them know what it is at the beginning. And don't get me don't get me wrong. I've rejected before. I got like, well, that's not really my cup of tea. And that's fine because that means those people wasn't for me. But then this other woman that said, you know what? That's honesty. I never even had that in a monogamous relationship. Because see, what goes on is a lot of people they like to tend to stereotype or judge a, a, a man that has a women who, who's uh, involved in a poly uh, lifestyle when a lot of these women that's in monogamous lifestyle is really sharing, but it's on the low. It's in secret. They don't know what's going on behind closed doors. You see what I'm saying? Because the man was never had the integrity or was transparent enough uh, to let him know what he truly desires. So, you know, I always give a woman that opportunity. So when I approach a woman or a woman approaches me, we usually just talk about it in the inbox. And if the, you know, understanding that we want to continue to talk, we exchange numbers and we go from there. Well, makes sense. Makes sense. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Makes sense. Next question. Let's see. All the guest questions. Okay. I mean, all the viewers' questions. So, this question is Can you see yourself involved in a relationship that's vice versa? What if your woman wants to have multiple men as her? Oh, I see why you gave me the warning. I see why you gave me the warning before you asked me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm viewers. Okay, so um, now, but I get this. Believe it or not, I get this question asked a lot. Um, just like from the, the spiritual, the Bible days to now, it's always been the man that's the head of the house. The man is the head. 
God created us, created us to be the head of our household. So, yes, if, if a woman wants to have another desires another man, then she be she she should be in his household. Now, don't get me wrong. I do know it's uh, other relationships called like poly, poly, ninja, I, I don't want to quote it, but where multiple multiple men with one woman. Yeah. I, you know, and I don't knock it. That's they can do whatever. But as far as what we got, that's too much. Period. Sounds, sounds uh, porno flick to me. Huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, that's, I mean, I, I said period. I said obviously that's too much test. That's too much testosterone going on, and that sounds like some other stuff. But you know, I'm not here to judge. You know, I don't, you know, I'm not here to judge. But yes, at the end of the day, uh, this is a one man house. You know, I'm the king. It's like the king of the jungle, a lion. You know, uh, so that, you know, it's only a one-man house, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, do y'all ever talk about having kids together? Yes, indeed. Uh, we talk. We talk about having it uh, once we get established. You want? Did you want to elaborate on it? Yeah, pretty much. Thank you. Um, when we get established, I don't want any right now. I used to. Gotcha. Right now, gotcha. you know, I'm going into doing my own thing right now. Gotcha. So, gotcha. kids, yes. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, since we're at the beginning of our, even though I've been in the music industry underground for a while, like I said, I know where I stand as far as the music industry. I know I haven't made it to the next high. So right now, I want to create a solid foundation for us, you know, career wise, yeah. you know, uh, uh, financially wise. And, and, and at the same time, I'm dealing with new people. So we don't want anything extra added that doesn't have to be there right now because that's, a, you know, children, that's a man. Like, Especially with me, the way I love children, I'll probably put a lot of stuff on the back burner mm -hmm. as far as, you know, if I had a new baby coming, she would too. So right now we're just focused. We're doing things to prevent that uh, just so we can yeah. continue to focus. on. We, we, we're basically just being responsible enough. We're not going to set ourselves up to be in a situation that we feel like wouldn't be good for us right now at this moment. Got you. So being with multiple wives, do sometimes you feel you feel it feels stressful being with multiple women because I, 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 I used to dabble I used to dabble back in the days real hard right? sometimes it can become stressful. Um, I will say this. First of all, I mean I'm human, of course, but in the past when I was toxic, when I was more toxic. Um, it was stressful because when I'm toxic and I'm unconscious and, and I wasn't on my spiritual tip, then I can let my ego get involved in certain things. I can respond in emotionalism. So that's when it became stressful. But now I understand things as I grow. Like I said, I'm not perfect, but as I grow today, I understand everything for exactly what it is. It's not that it's like I know how to put my ego to a side. I understand, okay, she's a woman. She has emotions. Um, this shall pass. Um, let's talk. Like, I, I'm not toxic anymore so when i was toxic yes it was stressful but now that um you know i'm a little bit more clear-minded i understand what the ego and how it plays in, in every human being's life and how they're eliminated and just being a present moment and uh taking things for what it is for face value not just taking the things for what it is face value but looking at the surface of things looking at the origin of things looking at what creates the stress and look at why I allow, because nobody can stress me out unless i allow it Unless you, unless I personally allow it. So even if she comes in and this woman is toxic or this woman is toxic, I have to allow them to have the power enough to allow it to, uh, to allow it to stress me. If you kind of, kind of understand where I'm coming from. But now, since I'm so uh, in tune with myself, you know, on the spiritual and an intellectual level, I don't even allow things to, you know, to get that far to where it's going to stress me at all. Mm -hmm. My voice, yeah, my voice going out. Excuse me, pardon me. My voice. Going out. <laughs> All right. So, next question from a viewer: Women is women given an option about who's gonna be with you, or are women with you at the same time, sleeping with you at the same time, having sex with you at the same time, or do you, or do you give it? You give that option to the man, the queen. This, this question was for her. Uh, was it was a no, uh, it you. for me okay uh when it comes to the um when it comes to women when it comes to sex uh the best way i can describe it because i 
organic. It just happened <laughs> organically. Like when it comes to sex, it's not like we don't have it planned. We don't have it scheduled. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a plan. We don't have a schedule. That was uh, my next question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it just like we're not. It's not no orgy party. It's not no big sex party. We're not walking around, and we're not just like like me and Armani. We probably haven't had sex in like six, seven days, probably. Like, like it's not like a. I don't know. Outside perception, people think that it's just like, you know, oh, beautiful women, one man. Oh, yeah, they just, you know, slang some on. But, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, when it go down, it go down. And sometimes it can go down one, two, or it can go down just, you know. She can do, you know, I wouldn't have to be in the room. I might not even be there. I might even show up for attendance. They might be doing their thing, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, uh, this is an organic. It just happened naturally. You know, we don't force anything. We just... Go with life the way of feeling. Like I might be down here on the couch, they might be upstairs, or I might, or I might me, me and somebody else might. You know, it just it just goes on however it goes on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I hear you. I was, <laughs> hey, bro, I respect your truth. Tell your truth. Tell your truth. <laughs> this question is for Mr. Money. Yes. Do you ever get jealous when you see? TKO with one of the other wives, do you ever want to feel like you want more and she is getting a way too much of him at that moment? Uh, I have in the past, yeah. I have. I, I'm a Leo, so I'm very ter territorial at the same time. Um, but now, like, our relationship is grown even more, and like I'm confident in our relationship. I'm confident in him, so I don't have any issues now. But yeah, in the past, like in the beginning, yeah, I did. Yes. And, and a key word, what she said was, hopefully y'all y'all understand, understand. Like 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 I said in my past, I was I was toxic. I was uh, not doing things with great moral as a man. I was just another nigga. You know what I'm saying? I was just another male. You know, and uh, so that I grew into I grew into a man, and I understand what a man is and integrity. Now she's going to respect who I am today. So that gives her more confidence in, in her womanship and her in her position. You see what I'm saying? So that's an important factor, you know. And me as a man, I gotta, you know, these are women that that I'm dealing with. So I gotta reassure, her, like, hey, baby, look, this is this is what it is. You know, I love you. Um, I, you know, nobody. First of all, we and I don't do the seniority. So a lot of people do that too. You know, when it comes down to, uh, they say, okay, she's been here with me 13 years. Uh, everybody else, that you just came home from prison, so everybody else is new. So does she walk around with an S on her chest? Like, no, I don't treat nobody better than the next person. Of course, I'm gonna have more yeah, trust sure. in her because she's been through things. We we experienced certain things. She's been tested. She's been tried. Uh, so I uh, it's not very comfortable and secure with her. As time grows, with other people, they look tested too. You know? so at the end of the day. Um, I feel like that was beautiful the way she answered it as far as her, her just being more confident. That's why she's not jealous. Gotcha. Uh, so, it's the reason it's happening in Omaha. Yeah. I thought you had to cut your mic off. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a big delay. I don't know why. Okay. So, Mr. Money, if you had to describe TKO, how would you describe it? Emotionally, spiritually, and physically? That's a good question. Uh, emotionally? Emotionally, he, he can, like, he's a Pisces, so he can feel a lot of people's emotions at the same time. So, you know, He's very like concerning when it comes to my emotions and anyone else's emotions. Like he goes, like he can feel it already, so he can already kind of know what you're going through. Okay. He teaches me a lot spiritually. Um, you know, I, I'm spiritual at the same time, but he's a great teacher at spirituality, and um. You know, he helps me a lot spiritually. Good. Okay, cool. Yep. Okay, okay, Stefan was right. Stefan was right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not even I'm not even a technician, man. You know? <laughs> yes, hey, I do. But bro, I got a good question for you. If okay. you answer you answer this and tell me how you truly feel about this. Okay. okay. Now, when you see this the, these reality shows with with 
the males, the white males with multiple wives. Now, viewers that are watching this, it's not a white thing, it's not a black mm. thing. We just going, <laughs> we just going at it from a societal standpoint. Right. When you see the the white male with multiple wives that yeah. they glorifying on TV. Right, right, right. But they see you with multiple wives. They look at you and they label you as a pimp. Right. But they label right. the white man that's on the shows Speaking. as someone that's loving, someone that's Speaking. caring. And when you Hefner was doing it, Speaking. everyone loved it. Speak it. But now you're doing it because of the color of your skin, you got to right. be pinted. Right. How would you address that? Right, man. First of all, this is a beautiful question. Like, this is a beautiful question. Like, you just now taking, like, I always talk about this behind the scenes. Um, when it comes down to the black man, we have a negative stigma attached to us. So, Thanks. but guess what, though? See, I'm always going to keep it straight 100 with you. It's not all be it's not because it's not the white people that's giving us only this stigma, though. We right. give it to our own people. How many people that's going to keep it real when they see me and they seen the jury on, I'm doing this, and, you know, I'm, you know Armani, she iced out, said, oh, yeah, he's a pimp. They didn't even, they didn't even give it a chance. You know, we've got to be honest with ourselves, and it starts with us. Because we put that into the collection, uh, the collection consciousness. So when we think a certain thing about our own race, of course everybody else is going to think something about us. And that's why man. we got to continue to up, man. Man, <laughs> speak that, speak that shit, boy. Speak that shit. You know, we got to learn to up, up lift our, uplift our people. You know, and uh, but we've been programmed a certain type of way. You know, our, you know, us, us black people to where if we don't uh, fit the narrative, like if we don't, um, if we're not a part of this, we knock it. Like, like me, I don't drink, I don't smoke. Like, I don't. Well, occasionally I may drink. You know, but I, I'm not a drinker. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't smoke. I don't but, do drugs. I don't party really. Like I don't go out to the clubs, you know, I, it, but I'm not against it. You know, I, I'm not knocking no, somebody for doing it or somebody might be into this type of relationship or gay or, you know, just because I'm not a part of it don't means I need to knock it. And I feel like a lot of people uh, of our own race who's not a part of this type of thing, all we can do is say, mm -hmm. yeah, them girls is brainwashed over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he pimping. Oh, he said she was a dancer. Oh, you know, he live in Vegas. Well, he, she had and this is how we do, and we tear down our own people. And the reason why you see other countries and, you know, building up, you know, from the Indians, the Asians, even some white, the reason why you see them prospering a little bit more than, than the black community is because they're not sitting there worried about the next person like that. They're not putting all their time and energy to tear down and, oh, and try to criticize. And this is where we have to change ourselves. This is where we have to change. We have to start with us. We have to start with us, you know, but I'm not trying to preach, you know, let me. Man, no, bro, you <laughs> hey. Some some shit need to be said, and you right. said it, right. and right. that's for sure. Some shit need to be said. Yes, indeed. So, man, I noticed I was checking out your videos, and I noticed one video where people mm -hmm. don't know that you you sort of an activist. Yes, indeed. I, I, I yes, saw indeed. you with um Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton. Yes, indeed. Put arms around you, showed mm -hmm. you love. Yes, indeed. About uh, 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 something that was really, really going on in that in that actual um state yes, at that indeed. moment. So yes. would you like to touch on that? Like, yes, Introduce indeed. yourself on, from that behalf. Introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, one thing about me is, you know, for the people who are just not tuning in, I have a, um, you know, like I said, I know my purpose. I know my calling in life. Uh, God has gave me a, a big heart for, uh, you know, being here for our people. You know, mm -hmm. you know, fuck all, excuse my friends, but fuck all the jury. All oh, the no, money, no, speak your mind. All the materialistic shit. Put all that shit to the side. All this shit is just a makeup. You know, all this stuff is this, you know, stuff, stuff that I like. I, I'm a flamboyant person. But the core of me, the heart of me, and what the root of me and what I stand for is for our people. When I, I'm building these platforms, my music, acting, uh, even speaking and building with the polygamy audience, I really just want to create a platform so I can reach my people and teach my people, help my people, whether it's financially, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. Uh, I love my people. So d during the time that he's talking about back in 2016, uh, a man named Terrence Crutcher got killed by a police officer, a white police officer. He had his hands up. He didn't have no gun or nothing like that. And he got killed in my hometown. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma, for those who just not tuning in. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And if y'all know anything about Tulsa, Oklahoma, it was called Black Wall Street. It was the number one place in the, war, I mean, well, in the uh, United States that was black owned during this time in the 1920s and, you know, 100. during this time. Yes, indeed. So at this time, 
you know, the, the rate, the, it was a lot of racism going on. We had the, uh, the 1921 race riot and they tore us down back in the day. So we have a, a heavy sensitive spirit against, you know, uh, the law enforcement, uh, well, not just law enforcement, but racist law enforcement, because we have a deep history with them. So um, during this time, a, a man got killed, Terrence Crutcher, who was beloved in our community. And um, me living, I was living in Las Vegas at the time. And at this time, I, I was in the game. I was in the fast lifestyle. But like I said, I always knew where I came from. I always knew what my, my main intent was. Whether I was uh, straight away, I had certain bad uh, uh, flaws about myself with manipulation at this time or, you know, certain toxic behaviors. I knew that I always had a heart for the people. So at this time, when he had got killed by the police, I wanted to go out there and stand with my people. You know, I wanted to go out there and support the family. I wanted to take the money I was making out the game. And I wanted to, you know, just help. help. I helped seven. Like, I, I'm not really big on trying to, like, say, oh, yeah, I'm doing all this. And like, I do things in private, really. Like, I, I, if that wasn't on the news, nobody would know that, that I did this because I'm not into being glorified. First of I'm all. I'm the same way, bro. Right, 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 right. I'm not I'm into, the same way. I'm not into being self-glorified because it's God that blesses us. He just used me as a vessel. I'm mm -hmm. nothing. I'm not shit. I'm just another ignorant person if I don't have God in my life and I'm not doing it with purpose. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, uh, I end up fl flying out there. And um, in the midst of me, uh, I had a little African dashiki. I know you've seen the video. I had a little African oh, yeah. dashiki on or hey, whatever. That, what. hey, that shit was fly. I ain't going to lie to you. I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah, it. I like it. So when I was uh, marching with our people downtown, um, I noticed... And it, this, 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 this hurts my heart to this day. I noticed when I looked in the crowd, I seen nothing but women, black women. What was the kings? I, I wasn't seeing no kings, no black kings. So it, it rubbed me the wrong type of way. It stirred up something in my spirit and somebody had a megaphone. So I, I asked them, uh, can I have his megaphone? So I, I got the megaphone and I just started speaking like, you know what? Where are, my, where are my black kings standing up? Why is the only black woman in this crowd today? Why did I have to, uh, how many miles am I away? Like 1,400 mi miles away from, why did I have to fly out here? And I mean, I wasn't the only black male out there, but the ratio was a, t a total, you could distinguish the, the fact that the difference. So I'm like, man, we got to start standing up for our people. And in the midst of that, I say, yes, I know we're coming together right now for uh, Terrence Crusher because he got killed by a white police officer, but I have to keep it real with everybody. We're the main, we're the main destroyer of, of our own race. And we don't do this. We don't stand up. We don't do rallies. Yeah. We don't speak against it. So in the midst of me speaking like this, everybody just started crowding around me. And then now I look up channel six is there. Channel eight is there. Everybody's looking at me and in the midst of me talking. That's when Al Sharpton, I didn't even know he was going to be there. That's when Al Sharpton walks up and on live TV says, you know what? I commend you for what you're doing. Uh, in this era, you know, I give you the keys to this, man. I, I want to commend you for what you're doing. So that's how that all happened. And then that same day, that same day, right when I said we're the own destroyers of our own race, less than 24 hours, my brother get killed. Man, I'd have been there, bro. I'd you know what I'm saying? There. So, it's, yeah. It's best friend shot him in the back. So I've been there, bro. I know what you're talking about. Yes, But indeed. the thing about it, when we, when we touch on that, when we say we destroy our own self, but we say it's our own people that that hold us down. It seemed like we be attacked then by you know what I'm saying our own people from speaking speaking facts and the truth. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, you know. Now all all yes. black people not bad. You know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Of course not. But I always I always say this. What I always say, bro. I mm -hmm. say, man, you got black people and you got niggas. It's just my mom right. always said that. My right. mom said, man, black people always want something, no matter if right. they're in the streets, no matter if they're on a pole, no matter right. what. Black people right. always see themselves progress and they always want to help each other Beautiful. Um, progress in life. Right. But niggas, right. niggas don't give a damn. Niggas will destroy you. Right. You right. know, and that's right. that's something that my mom have always said. So right. I always say, man, I always want to surround myself with good, good, positive um, black people. No matter, no matter right. what they're doing in the streets. Oh, right. man, I was a street kid. So, you know, right. I don't, you know, so I don't look at people lifestyles and say okay oh he's a fucked up individual i judge a man by his character that's Bingo. it that's it you yep. said something so beautiful man and yep. let me let me take it a, a step even deeper i'm not gonna elaborate too much on, on this but at the same time okay like i said we don't we don't own destroyers of our race but let's go even deeper the reason why we don't own destroyers of our race is because of what, how they enslaved us at the beginning at the beginning of the beginning before that but that's not an excuse we don't use it as an excuse because just like how i could how I could, I could already tell man you got a pure spirit about yourself i can already tell you don't subscribe to a nigga mentality so just like you can do it 
I can do it. We all can do it. Can do it. 100. You see what I'm saying? So 100. yes, we may come from a certain background to where they try to suppress us and uh, they put us in these projects. That's why they called it a project in the first place. They, they did these experiments with us and they put crack in our neighborhood in the poverty. Yes, this all happened. And yes, that does play a big cause in our lives today and why we have a crap in the bucket mentality. But we still have the beautiful minds that God blesses, the infinite minds that God yeah. blesses with, and we can still change that around. You know, so it's yeah. a beautiful thing just even talking to another brother that's on that frequency. Yeah. And, 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 and white people, like me and TKO right now and Mr. Money, when we saying this, we not saying that we hate white people. We yeah. not saying that we, right. we, we, we don't want to collaborate with you. Mm -hmm. What we saying in order for us to reach outside of our home, we first have to get our home together first. And that's our community. That's, that's our it. race first. That's now it. Now we can collaborate with you all on the outside once we get, a, we, once we get each other together. That's so it. that's what we're trying to do. So it's not racism. It's not bigotry. Uh, if we being biased. Right. It's us trying to strengthen our own race first. For Bingo. We can march as strong as you all, too. Bingo. That's, that. that's yep. beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Yeah. And stuff. So, will you see yourself five years from now, brother? Um, I see. I see not only myself, but I see my empire. Uh, me and my wives. I see us very uh, successful on a platform of, of teaching people, of changing people's life. Every day, my uh, one of my affirmations. I say, I want to become a wealthy philanthropist that ha leaves a, that transfer many lives, that transform many lives, and impact generations. You know, that's my main thing. I want to transform lives and impact generations. You know, yes, uh, you know, living in luxury, all that stuff is, is, is fun. Yes, I drive a Bentley. Yes, I have a Rolex on, two Rolexes on. But that's not the things that, um, that I stand for. These are just things that just, you know, it's just fun. So when I say success, you cannot only measure success in money. People think our fame. You know, I always say this. The main people who contribute to, um, when it comes to ha being, being famous, it wasn't, uh, the main people who really left an impact on lives wasn't the people who became famous, wasn't the people who became millionaires, it was the people who contributed to empowering our thoughts. Those are the people that leave impacts, and that's what I want to be. That's what, so when I say successful, that's what I, I want to leave an impact on the world. I like that, bro. I like that. It. Man. Bro, you, you spoke Appreciate your mind. It. You spoke your truth, bro. Appreciate and, man, it, it's, it's truly an honor and a pleasure to have you a part of the platform, bro. They're like, Most real definitely. talk. Most definitely. It, anytime you need it, it's, it's open for you. And it's all, seriously. It's all love. The way, yep. you, the way you approached it, the way that you approached it, I already knew in our conversation off camera, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know and, and I'm a strong believer. Like, I pray and I meditate every day. And I say, God, please right. align, align me with people that's going to assist the calling that you put me on earth for. So right. I, know that, I know that we didn't cross paths just by, and I'm not trying to be extra religious or spiritual. No, bro, people, speak your shit. Speak your shit. I knew when I crossed paths, just like a, a couple of other people that I crossed paths with when it comes to the interviews, everything is divine timing, and it's a beautiful thing. And uh, I've been meeting some very beautiful people, man, and, and you're just one of those people, man. I appreciate you man, for having same me on your bro. platform. 100, same here, bro. Most definitely. That's 100. Most definitely. Yep. And Mr. Money, man, it, it's a Our pleasure. Money. Our money. Hold on. My, my correction. Yes, money. My pleasure. Yes, my indeed. pleasure meeting you. And you know what? And missing money. Anytime you want to interview yourself, because mm -hmm. I want to do a part because you say you you're in the dance, you you you're a scripper. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I want to also shine a light on on that as well, well in the future good. because because a lot of people get this this negative stigma about mm -hmm. scrippers. And I always tell people because I have friends that that's right. scripping, and I'm like you will be amazed how intelligent and brilliant these women are. Yeah. They, they are just there <laughs> just to make ends meet, you know? Right. <laughs> but I'm like, if you, if you truly get to know them, you will truly mm -hmm. understand that these are some, these are some, some good women, yeah. you know? Right. So right. I, want, I want to shine that, that, that actual light, you know what I'm saying, right. on that, you right. know? Right. And one right. day let you speak your truth because a lot of people Absolutely. need to hear that. Right. For sure. And, and let, me, let me add on real quick to what you were just now saying. I think mm -hmm. the difference is between um, really anything in life, but like a men who, a black men who have polygamous lifestyles or women who are strippers, is we, we have to, and this is the reason why I feel like God put us in this position, is because we have to show people that you can distinguish, because everybody is not, everybody that's a stripper doesn't mean that they're not, like it's, it's, a, it's some people that really are lost. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's in polygamy 
is some men that really are in the cults and trying to uh, uh, be selfish ambition and doing things behind them closed doors. You see, you see what I'm saying? So we're just here to uh, create a different perception and let everybody uh, not put us in that, that stigma, that same type of category and let them know that it's good people in, 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 in everything. And we were supposed to, God, I feel like God put us on earth uh, in particular to be a light in many dark places. I was about to say that. Uh, facts. And, but that's, a, that, that's, I think that is the, the actual disconnect. Mm -hmm. we, when we look at people's lifestyle, we, we automatic shit on them. Right. And we don't know why they choose that lifestyle. Some people choose right. that lifestyle because they're comfortable within it. Right. And some people choose a lifestyle because they force within that lifestyle. Yes, indeed. So I always tell people, like you just said, we, we, we have to be a light right. for others as well. And, and uh, in order to be that light, we have to start listening to people and learning their stories. Because uh, if a person on the, on the street selling dope mm -hmm. or whatnot, I'm never going to judge this dude by the shit that he sell. I'm right. a judge him by his conversation. I'm a judge him by his spirit, the way he approached things, and also his character. His character. So yes, the viewers on here, I'm telling you all, we have to stop prejudging people. Right. Be right. Because we don't know their story. Right. And this is what this platform is for, for people to share Beautiful. their story. You know? Yes, so, indeed. man, I appreciate you all. Man, it's number love, number respect. Yes, indeed. From this day yes, forward indeed. and on. I yes, truly appreciate you, you too. And thank you very much for gracing the platform. Yes, and before we close off, do y'all want to say anything? Go ahead. You can go first. Anything you want to say? I think I need that one. You think you need that one? Can hear me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Come up, come up a little closer. Yeah, you can tell me your social media or anything. Yeah. Uh, so if anyone wants to come and follow me, um, it's Armani Bougie on everything. A-R-M-A-N-I-I-I-B-O-U-J-I-E. Um, on Facebook, it's only with two eyes, so Armani Bougie with two eyes. Uh, follow our YouTube channel. Um, I actually do have, like, a deeper story on there about, you know, my personal life. So mm -hmm. if you're just looking at me from here, you know, you can go and learn a little bit more about me. It's um, TK Capone and the and sign, Da D-A, Drip Angels. And you can follow me anywhere on there. Yes, indeed. Respect. Respect. That's beautiful. And um, I'm TK Okapone. Uh, yes, I do have my own YouTube channel where I've been doing music for years. But yes, please go to our TK Okapone and the Drip Angels. That's TK Okapone, C A P O N E, the at the and sign, D A Drip Angels. And uh, you know, um, always, I just, I just want to give this to, to the viewers. You know, always examine your intent. Don't try to just look for people, other people's intent. Always, before anything that you do, stay true to yourself. But examine Thanks. your intent. Thanks. Like, like, why am I doing this? What motivates me to do this? Am I only doing this for selfish ambition, or am I doing this so I can be a blessing to somebody? Or, or am, am, I, am I loving myself, or am I loving my ego? First of all, you got to understand the difference between that. But you know, uh, my name is TKO Capone. My IG is TKO C A P O N E. Um, you know, live life, love God, love yourself. Uh, know that you know who you are, know who God is, and know that your connection. Between you know who you, who you are uh, with him, and uh, last mm -hmm. but not least, I want to say rest in peace to my brother. Hustle three times, you know, and uh, that's what I was talking about. Who got killed within 24 hours? But most man. definitely, and man, much respect to you. And I appreciate you, man. Um, same here, bro. Same here. Number love, number respect. Yes, God indeed. bless you all and positive yes, energy along your journey, bro. Yes, indeed. It's all love. Take all care. love. Yes, God indeed. bless. Yes, indeed. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you all for tuning in. And normally we have lives every Sunday at 8 p.m. Great topics. And tonight I just wanted to, you know, push it up for Mr. TKO because the man had a story to tell. And I'm happy that he actually joined this platform for to tell his story. So every Sunday, 8 p.m., live topics right here, minus stuff on. And every week I'm posting live inspirational videos on the wall for you all can have something to inspire you all to motivate you all and give you something to think about along your day as well so thank you all for tuning in and for my for my followers my viewers man i love you all thank you all for your love and support and for the new viewers thank you all for tuning in too god bless you all